This is Peppy Willie. This is Marcy Ingoldstead. This, this is Christy Lazenberry of 94, 94 East. East. And we're listening to WVOF 88.5 yeah. with Joe Kelly. And that's the great CD from 94 East, and that's from Peppy Willie, Marcy Ingvoldstad, and Christy Lazenberry. Been wanting to talk with them for all these years, and uh, this is the Minneapolis Music Special here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly on WVOF. And guess what? We are going to talk with some of the founders of the Minneapolis music scene, and it's great to have a new CD out, and a pleasure to have them on the line out in Minnesota. How's everybody doing? <laughs> We're hey. doing fine. Hey, Joe, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> that it's was Marcy. <laughs> yeah, oh, hey, Marcy. Marcy. It's a pleasure to be on your show. We enjoy listening to The Upper Room so much. You're, Joe... Your your show is the bomb. Oh, okay. We absolutely <laughs> love it. We love hearing you. We love hearing G. Yeah, G. 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 Oh, that's right. G. G. The <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'll pass the word on to G. She's probably listening, but she's not in the studio right now. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah she'll yeah, appreciate the love. We love the show, man. It, it's, it's a lot of variety there. And you know, and you're doing such a great thing for the, all the, in, the independent musicians out there. Absolutely. Right, for the community. Yeah, and I appreciate the the love and respect from you guys. Yeah. So, so Peppy and I were were talking before uh, Christy and Marcy uh, stopped by a little bit about the way uh, Minneapolis or Minnesota radio used to be. Oh yeah. And uh, so, what happened? What I know, radio? I, knew they, <laughs> I know. You know, I, I was thinking about this today that you know we're out in Connecticut. I do it for the love of the the music out of Minnesota, but you know they need to do that right in your your cities up there. So. So what has gone wrong, and do you see any hope for it? Oh, gee. I don't know, man. Well, I know back in the day when the sun went down, the radio station was over, you know, because oh. it was run by Solar Power, uh-huh. you know. And here they have a community station here called uh, KMOJ, and, uh, did, you know, you know, I hate they're, to say it, they're not doing that well. Yeah, they're going through a lot of... Um, transition right now and trying to get the the station together they have a lot of community that's uh concerned about the direction of the station and uh i think they're in some bit of financial straits right now too so we need some real support for uh radio here right in minneapolis for supporting the local artists i mean this is like 2003 you know what i'm saying i mean we should have a a good radio station here in minneapolis being that all the music that came out of here and all the the stars and everything that was done here i mean we should have a good radio station here and uh and we don't we don't you know so so when you come out with the new cd what's the strategy i know uh and we're going to give people the the website where they can order it yeah how how about locally how how do you try to work it there and and get it out there well we get it into uh the local um uh, record shops um try to advertise our website so people can get it on our website and we try to reach many um uh, other websites that uh, would sell it, you know, like cdbaby.com and CD, uh, what is the other one, Chrissy? D Music. Uh, D Music, and then uh, peppymusic.com. And then the record, co- the record um, stores, um, uh, um, dot com. what is it, electricfetus.com, right. they're on there mm-hmm. and everything, and, uh, and we just try to get it around, and uh, it, it's surprising that we're getting uh, the sales that we're getting, a lot of them are coming from overseas. Like in Japan and France and Germany, uh, Belgium, you yeah, know, the Netherlands. Yeah, you know, we're getting a lot of sales from over there, but we're working it slow. We don't want to go out there and just try to sell like nine hundred million. That's right. <laughs> you know, so we're just working it slow, taking it one step at a time, one store at a time, one radio station at a time. You know until we just build up one city, one state, the next state, and just keep building. And in, in further answer to your question, Joe, um, we have built up relationships over the years with various people that, you know, might be in the news area or in newspaper area, and, and we try to take advantage of those those connections, too, to try right. to get some more or less, quote-unquote, uh, free publicity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so it works that way. Yeah, you know? so City Pages, right? That, that's a paper outside your way, right? Well, yeah, yeah. but the, I think we've been getting more uh, from, like, the Star and Tribune, 
you know, and uh, um, the, spoke- the main city piece. What was that other one, Chrissy? The spokesman. The spokesman recorder. Yeah, the spokesman recorder, and just the local papers here. Yeah, city pages and you know things like that. We try to uh, um, to advertise in those uh, magazines so that people can see uh, where to get our CD from. Well, the key is is that we want to drive people to the website. PepeMusic.com, <laughs> right. so that they can uh, not only purchase our CD, but also to get a, a, a sense of the history of the Minneapolis music scene. On our uh, website, we have detailed out our involvement in the creation of the Minneapolis music scene. And... Uh, uh, once people get to the website, I mean, there's a wealth of information there, not only about that, but also those things that our business is in, involved in. Right, because we're not just, you know, selling our CD there, what we're doing. We want, we like to help the, the individual musician, artist, manager, promoter, or whatever. Whatever they don't understand about the music industry, we want to uh, make sure that they understand about it. You know, if we don't understand, we have friends uh, in high places in the industry where we can get all the answers. Mm-hmm. Right, whether you're starting out or you've been in the business for a while, right. you always need to find out uh, certain kinds of information. Yeah, there you go. So, so you have uh, on your website uh, a business philosophy that we might want to touch on, right? Oh, I, absolutely. I, noticed that. I yeah. mean, it's the same thing that we did when we uh, was uh, with Prince back in the day and stuff, you know, um, we still teach those same tactics, that, you know, that we uh, showed him. Uh, um, um, copywriting your music, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, being humble in the industry. Don't make enemies in the industry. You know, the, in, the, the enemy that you make today might be the president of the record company tomorrow and where you're going to try to drop your record, you mm-hmm. know? So you got to try to stick to your guns but yet and still be humble and not try to act like you know everything. You know, you get more information out of asking someone a question than, uh, than dictating something to them. You know what I mean? And our, our motto is the music may be different, but the business is the, is same. the same. Oh, yeah, that, that's what I was referring yeah. to, right? Right. So uh, 94 East, uh, to refresh our listeners right now, we're talking with uh, Peppy Willie, Marcy Ingvoldstad, and Christy Lazenberry. Yeah. who is uh, the core of 94 East and bringing it into uh, this year with a new release. And uh, talking about how far you guys go back in the history of Minnesota music, uh, a lot of people know, but uh, a refresher course for those who are stepping up and hearing you guys for the first time, uh, working with Prince and Andre Simone. And I'll give you a little tidbit. Andre Simone was the first guy I ever interviewed. Oh, and yeah. That, and, and, that, that and that was guy. way back... I think I was like a 19-year-old nervous kid. I was 1983. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so ha- have you? Do you still run into Andre? Or is oh, he still out there? Absolutely. Yeah. He just got married. What was it? Last summer? It well, was, no, it was probably summer before last. Couple summers yeah. ago. We yeah. We went oh, okay. to his wedding. You know, we talked to him all the time. We we're very tight with his family, his mom, and everything. And yeah. Uh, you know, Andre. You know, we call him Dre. You know, he uh, he he's keeping it real all the time. All the time, yeah, I mean, this good brother, people. man, you know, as far as musicians in this industry, if they were more like Andre Simone, you know, with the emotion and the heart and the humbleness that this guy has, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it, we would get would a lot good. further. Right. <laughs> so so you got to tell him he's got to come back 20 years later on the show. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to call him up. I'll call right, him up right. after Let him know. And but, let him know, man. You I know. mean, your first inter- interview was out of Minneapolis. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> that true. Cool. It was at a commercial radio station uh, in Bridgeport way back at WNAB. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> well, we've always <laughs> found that the people on the East Coast, yay. Yeah, right. Yeah. East Coast got East what's Coast, happening, baby. Brooklyn. Right. You know, that's support, right. Support uh, what's happening in Minneapolis oftentimes more than the Minneapolis does. That's right. There you yeah. go. It's quite amazing. But I attribute that partly uh, because Pepe is the one who came from the East Coast. <laughs> he came from the East Coast, <laughs> brought all that good East Coast 
knowledge and, and information. And brought it here to Minneapolis. Yeah. So, so and also the and guts. Is really I, I, I call it East Coast guts. Because <laughs> when he, he came here, there weren't very many people who were even dreaming about uh, making records to uh, get a label yeah, deal and, yeah. and get their own music out there and perform as an artist. Very few people were even thinking about that. Yeah, they just didn't know. They it, Either they wanted it, but they didn't know how it was done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the bands would go out and perform. You know, like Flight Time, they had their bus, and there was a Cynthia Johnson and everybody, and, and then Prince and his band, they just performed somewhere, but they had no idea of the uh, the basic uh, uh, production qualities that you had to have in order to record music, you know, and what it took. You know, everybody thought that you go in, you do it one take, and that's it, you know. <laughs> but it's quite not like that. So, you know, when I came into town and I had the experience of um, of production and producing and writing and all that with Little Anthony and Imperials working with those guys, you know, I come back, I come from a background uh, from the 60s uh, with uh, with those guys and Diana Ross. I met Diana Ross when she was like 17 years old. Wow. You know, and my sister used to go with Stevie Wonder. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, all of these cats from Mary Wells to Dionne Warwick to Four Tops and Miracles and Marvin Gaye. I mean, you name it. Even Wayne Newton when he was like 18 years old, you know. <laughs> You know, the Ronettes. I mean, I could just name them all. I used to go to the store for those guys, you know, Ray Charles and Ray Alette and Chubby Checker and, you know, you know, all of them. I mean, we just did so much. I, that's where I got all my knowledge from and all my information. All those shows at the Brooklyn Fox Theater? Yep, all of those shows, you know. So so, so what initially uh, brought you to the Twin Cities? Ooh, <laughs> okay, this is a quick story, so I'm going to make it longer. No. All <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, what happened was uh, my uncle's group, Lil' Anthony and Imperials, were, were performing at the Copacabana in New York City. And uh, my uncle, Clarence Collins, w was dating this woman named Kalua Lagans. Now, little did I know that Kalua Lagans was Prince's aunt. So she had her niece with her named Chantel. Now, Chantel was at that show, and uh, I introduced myself to her at the Copacabana, and the rest is history. We got married not too long after that. <laughs> but she introduced me to Prince when... Um, uh, Prince was like around 15, 16 years old, and uh, that was Prince's first. That is Prince's first uh, cousin, and that's when I met Prince at a ski party playing uh, uh, for the ski party. He, uh, Morris was on drums, Andre was on bass, and uh, Prince was on guitar. Uh, Linda, Andre's sister, was on keyboards. William Dowdy was on uh, percussion. Percussion, and um, you know, and I thought it was great. And Levon. Doherty, uh, Morris Day's mom, was the manager. So I went and I talked with her, and I said, hey, your group sounds great. I would love to work with these cats, you know. And she says, great. And I think uh, the next day I was at their rehearsal just beating these guys into shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think I read something like uh, you, you taught Morris how to use the whole drum kit, right? I know. He was only using, like, three <laughs> drums, man. He had a seven-piece set, and he only played three of them. And I was going, right, like, wait right. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then all about the uh, song construction. And yeah, we showed. How to write for the commercial. Yeah, commercial market. They would play a song, and and sing it, and then, uh, you know, they jam for 20 minutes after that. And mm -hmm. I was going like, well, you forgot the, I forgot the name of the song, man. Right, you right. Know? <laughs> <laughs> so we had to kind of, like, get construction down. You had to have an intro and, uh, you know, a verse and a chorus and a bridge and all of that stuff, and we put everything in order. And, uh, and I found out during that time that I was working with them that the real strength of that band was Prince and Andre. You know, because anything that Prince could do, Andre could do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, these guys are equally talented. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, being that Prince was, you know, basically in my family at that point, I had said, well, Prince, why don't you come and play with my band? I'm in the recording studio now, and uh, you can come and play with us, you know. And he said, okay, fine. So we walked him over to the Musicians Union, got him into the Musicians Union, because we had to do everything legally, 
because this is what we were preaching. We were telling these guys, this is, right. this is the legal thing. This is how you get things done. So I couldn't do it any other way but the right way, you know. So uh, we got them into the union. We filled out uh, uh, phonograph recording contracts uh, from the union, and we paid these guys, you know, union scale in order so that they could uh, record and everything is legal and, and, and above board. So, and then once Prince was in the studio, I mean, it was over. It was <laughs> over. That's just. Would he uh, lock everybody out? Well, you know, it was like being in a candy store. Right. You're right. getting your first piece of candy. Somebody give you a taste, and then they lock you in there. <laughs> <laughs> you go crazy. I mean, he went totally like that was it. That was He found his it. element. That was, he right. didn't care about nothing element. else. That was it, man. And, I, and he was so talented at that point. He was like 16 years old. He was so talented that he heard some mistakes in the guitar work that he was doing on one of the songs. I think it was I Always Love You or If We Don't, one of those songs from the first Cook House Five recordings. And, uh, and I had the confidence at that time. I was like 24, 25 years old. And I had the confidence at that time to go like, oh, well, I called the studio and had Prince go in by himself and, and redo those guitar parts. You know, and I'm paying like a hundred dollars an hour, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. you know, for that, you know, for us to do that. And that was the only difference between 94 East and in Flight Time or Grand Central or you know Champagne, you know Prince's Group and stuff like that, was the fact that we had money to go into recording studios, and plus we had the the background and the knowledge. You know. Hey, I, I oh I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'll quickly say that. Um, we have some instant messages from our people listening on the internet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they, someone said, "I love those people. They have such a great and positive energy. It's what I feel." So, yeah. Oh my God. Thank you. That's what we're all about. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe, what I wanted to say was, you know, as a lot of people know, a lot of what we've put out over the years has been tracks that Prince has played on from that time period, right. and one of the main reasons we have been able to do that was that we did everything legally and properly right. back at that time. Yeah, yeah. so I, I guess I, I was going to ask you this, but I guess now, now's the right time because, you, you know, s people out there listening sometimes say, oh, you know, they're releasing um, some tracks. And right. so, so why don't you talk about, you know, a as you guys said, releasing it legally and, and the feedback and, uh, you know, give us a little insight into how that goes. Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah, well, the feedback I can tell you about that. <laughs> it's kind of like touch and go. It's kind of up and down. Right, uh, right. Unless the, they know a lot of the Prince fans, and, and bless their heart, they're they're really loyal, and 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 you can't beat that. Yeah, everyone needs fans like that. Yes. And they know Prince through his music. You know, we know him. Okay, <laughs> you know, and his music. You know, so it, when we do something, it. it we waited 10 years before we've, we've had this music for, I can't tell you how long. And we've, we've been waiting for such a long time for, um, for Prince to call us up and go like, okay, Pep, it's your turn. Uh, okay, Pep, you know, let's, it's, it's, you know, you got any tunes or what are you going to do? Or, you know, what, you know, we're waiting for him to help us. And because we helped him out through all of these years. And, and that, that was the reason why we hadn't put anything out. Then when we decided to put things out, and then we get attacked by, you know, certain fans of his and stuff, and, you know, like we're out there trying to make money off of his name and things like that, it, it wasn't that. That's all the music that we had. All the 94 East music that we got, Prince is on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we want our music out just as much as anyone else, you know. Prince just happened to be on it. Matter of fact, when we had got signed with with uh, Poly, Polydor, uh, uh, Prince was on those tracks that we got signed with, you mm -hmm. know, and that's how uh, 1015 and Fortune Teller was developed. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'll give you uh, a compliment from from myself, and I think G would echo this. I, I think the new material on this record is, you know, definitely slamming. So, oh, thank you. So, you know, <laughs> thank you. 
we we love and i think you guys you know what you're doing now is great as far as the new material so thank you yeah. so we, much we want we, we want to get the new record too the well, upcoming yeah, records all those productions yeah because the 10 15 and fortune teller were the only tunes that uh prince people have not heard mm-hmm. you know and and it was unfortunate that we got dropped from polydor back in 1977 i believe it was and uh, even Prince had got angry at that time because he wasn't signed yet. And um, he, he was saying that if he didn't get signed uh, at that time, that he would have been playing with 94 East. Prince would have been a 94 East member than just a sideman. You mm-hmm. know? And, uh, but when we got dropped, he had looked at Andre. We were all standing together, and he got said, man, he said, man, those are some great songs, man. He says, we got to go back in the studio with Pepe. You know, and then we went back into the studio and we recorded Just Another Sucker that Prince and I wrote together. Yeah, I love that song. And yeah. uh, Dance to the Music of the World and Loving Cup, mm-hmm. you know. And, <laughs> you, know and, you know, then we, you know, we went to New York. We did, we did Dance, uh, If You Feel Like Dancing. Um, what was the other one? Uh, one Man one Jam. One Man Jam. And uh, uh, some other tune. I can't remember which one it was. If You See Me? I don't know which no, one, where no. that one was. But anyway, but we, you know, I mean, we were really, really tight, 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 tight. And the thing about it is that we, you know, any any time we put out anything, we always either call Prince or contact, or, try or, to contact his organization, or try to contact his organization as he's got huger to let everyone know, you know, what we were doing. You know, so it, it wasn't anything behind his back. I mean, we have nothing but love. For right, his brother, brother. Right. and concern too, you know. That's so, right. and yeah. and Joe, you you know from some of the things we have been on some of the uh, websites of people's comments um, <laughs> that we this, love them. This new material is is two two Prince songs that no one has ever heard. Tunes, yeah, and they are oh, not. That, that, that's what we've been stressing to people, so they, they need to do their homework. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Joe. You guys have been doing a great yeah. so, <laughs> Did so, I say we love your show? <laughs> uh, well, we love 94 East, and uh, you know what? Actually, you know, we're going to play uh, something you were talking about, 1015, uh, yeah. with Prince and uh, back in the day and recorded uh, uh, in Minnesota. Uh, who who else was working on this originally? I know you have a new brother working with you now on some of the stuff, but right, we have uh, 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 Ben Obi helped produce and uh, rearrange 1015 and Fortune Teller, and he did the whole CD with me. We also have Eric E Class Wall Tower, <laughs> you know, uh, who did all the flowing on there. We got four songs on there that he did some flows on, which were totally cool. You know, even people that weren't uh, really that uh, keen on uh, uh, rap, uh, loved those songs, you mm-hmm. know. You know, I mean, it was great because what we're saying is all positive type things that's going on, you know. And uh, we, uh, we have other musicians like Jason Peterson uh, from the famous Peterson family, you know. With, yeah, St. Paul was just on the show. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, he's a great friend of ours and stuff. And these are the people that we stay in contact with and, stay in con- and they stay in contact with us. Uh, Jason's on Life is Just a Bowl of Cherries, and we have uh, um, uh, Jimmy Berenger uh, playing guitar on uh, Great Guitarist um, 2051, mm-hmm. and also um, Life is Just a Bowl of Cherries. He's on that one too. All right. Marcy, what are you saying? Marshall. Oh yeah, and Marshall Charlaw. Marshall Charlaw. He's right. a very good friend of ours. Even we got Chaz, uh, Chaz yes. Smith, uh, Prince's cousin, doing a. Uh, um, percussion turnarounds for us on um, tight dresses and lipstick. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to incorporate everybody. We got Samuel Sylvester, another good friend of ours, who lives in Nashville, Nashville. who's who's playing guitar on uh, and keyboards on, um, 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 uh, what was it? It's not Falling in Love. It's the next tune after that. Oh, Tell Me Why. Tell Me Why, why, you know. And And then um, uh, Larissa. Oh, yeah, Larissa Jones, who's singing the, uh, the the lead um, vocalist, woman vocalist on 1015, and she did a great job on that too. I mean, it's just an excellent job, you know. So we we yeah. try to incorporate as producer, you know, we try to incorporate uh, some great musicians and singers, you know, to make everything work. Oh, and another thing, um, Joe, and for listeners out there, is Fortune Teller 
was written by a man named Henry Cosby, right. who uh, co-wrote My Sharia More with uh, Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder. Yeah, yeah. And he produced and has, Once in My Life, right? Once in, yeah, he was, uh, he's was. he got quite a background, but he, he did Fortune Teller specifically for, for us. our group. And, you know, that's, right. and that's one of the main reasons why we went back to Polydor to get those licenses for those songs, because they didn't even know that Prince was on them. But we went back, not to only get them for uh, uh, Prince's uh, work on it, but also uh, the song Fortune Teller, because uh, Hank had written that for us, and he had recently passed away. Yeah. And uh, um, you Yeah, know. it was a way that we could, you know, honor him, because yeah. we always have to honor those that have paved the way for us that have come after. Right. And we're talking to all the people that uh, Pepe has mentioned and even further back. Somebody like Hank, you know, took a risk coming out to Minneapolis from New York right, yeah. and signing us up to Polydor, you know, and, uh, and that was great. And there are a lot of other people that paved the way for us to be able to do the things that, that we, we do, do today. and we, 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 we give our props to those guys because they're the ones who's making it possible Absolutely. for us to have our own labels, for us to go in the studios and record without any uh, uh, differences and stuff like that, and it just enable us to do what we do now. Absolutely. I mean, before we wouldn't, we couldn't even own any publishing. We'd be lucky if we got any writing royalties and stuff like that. Well, yeah. and that's the one of the key things that Pepe did. Uh, when he came into the cities here, is that, especially, you know, with Prince, he started his first publishing company. He laid the foundation so that the man could be financially be, secure right, and yeah. not ripped off. Because it's so, it's so easily that he could have been pimped out there. I oh. mean, so easily, you know, and I would not let it happen. I just would not let it happen. So it's kind of like guided him by the hand, so to speak, and, and took him around to, um, like, one of my best friends was Don Taylor, who recently passed away also, and he was the the manager of Bob Marley and the Whalers. So, and I went to him so that Prince could, you know, find, you know, great management after he um, fell off uh, with uh, Owen Husney. You know. So, uh, you know, speaking about those early days in Minnesota, we're going to get into a, a track right now. Beautiful. Um, from 94 ECD, it features uh, 1015 and Fortune Teller remix with Prince on guitar, and we'll get into the song uh, written by Mr. Cosby. We'll talk uh, Fortune Teller right here from 94 East. Pepe Willie, Marcy Ingvoldstad, and Christy Lazenberry are here. We're going to come back and talk with them for a little more, but first we'll get into Fortune Teller. 94 East. Yeah, this, as Pepe said, Triple M Month. <laughs> Minneapolis Music Month, so, and uh, that's 94 East with uh, Fortune Teller, uh, the remix. 94 East, let me give you the websites, pepemusic.com, or you can also go over to cdbaby.com and just type in 94 East, and you'll be all set, and, and spend a little time on the website. As mentioned before from uh, Peppy and Marcy and Christy, they said there's a history lesson on there, a lot of good things they're giving back to uh the community, and uh, they're still up in Minnesota and uh, Maple Grove, right? That's yeah, it. what you call it. Yeah. <laughs> Maple Grove. <laughs> okay, it's actually Maple Grove, but right, we, right. we like to call it Groove. Yeah. You know, we forgot to tell you that uh, singing on Fortune Teller Oh, yeah. Is... Oh, I have my daughter singing on that. Oh, okay. So it's great. That's cool. I got to sing in background vocals with Marcy and Christy. That was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, but I had to pay her. Oh. Yeah. I mean, see, I even had to pay Where's my, my daughter. Check? I'm waiting for my I mean, check. legal. I mean, you know, <laughs> union scale. I had to pay her. You yeah, know. me and Marcy are still waiting to get paid. <laughs> yeah, that's right, baby. After all these years. Uh, they got paid, believe me. <laughs> so, so, you know, we should let our listeners know the story of um, how Christy and Marcy and, and Pappy ho hooked up. and the oh, other oh, gee. Oh, <laughs> well, well, I'm also an actor, <laughs> and Christy is also an actress. <laughs> And, and Marcy's uh, a director. I'm a director. And Marcy's a director. <laughs> We're going to do a movie on this whole Minneapolis scene. Oh, so anybody yeah. interested, you better email us, and, you know, <laughs> and come to our site and email us. But, but the way that we met, I met Christy at a play she was doing, 
and uh, Nettie Hayes Sherman, right, Christy? Yes. And I played one of the many husbands that <laughs> Nettie Hayes Sherman uh, uh, had. Uh, she was uh, uh, a club owner back in the... A uh, popular jazz performer, too. Right, and, and where all the gangsters used to hang out in Minnesota back in the day used to hang out at her club. Oh, okay. You know, so Christy was doing a play on... was performing a play on her, and I played her one of her husbands on that play. And then Marcy, I, I had been going to uh, St. Olaf College where I met Marcy, and um, Marcy and I, we'd be hanging out with Pepe, and, and one day we were in his VW Bug Yo, baby. on the freeway. The Straight and, up from uh, New York, too. That's <laughs> <laughs> super Beatles. And we were, because Marcy and I would always sing in, in college, we'd always sing you know, harmonized together. So we were singing to songs on the radio, and he was like, wait was a minute. It was New Year's Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve. He's like, wait a minute. I need some background singers. So. That's right, because I didn't know they could sing, because we just hang out, and we go to, like, the big bands and go see, like, Maynard Ferguson and stuff like that at, yeah, at, at, the, Saint, prom at the prom center in St. Paul. Right. And then one day, New Year's Eve, we didn't have nothing to do, so we was in our car, and, uh, you know, we did have a bottle of champagne, and, you know, okay, it was back in the day now. And we don't do that anymore, but we were, had a little sip of champagne, and, and it was playing all these Motown hits on the radio. And then all of a sudden, they were singing the background vocals, and I was going like, I didn't know you girls could sing. <laughs> man, y'all singing all my stuff, but we were right yeah, in we the studio. Like, oh, man, what an opportunity that was. Just That's right. jumped right on it. What a <laughs> thrill. You know, a girl yeah, but, getting out of college, you know. Yeah, but you got wrong. you got to know this part of the story okay. is that, you know, we had never done anything professionally before. We just, you know, sang. Right, right. And so Peppy started working with us in the studio, and he'd be having us crying. <laughs> and, oh, terrible. He's a perfectionist. I know. Oh, well, like, that's it, that's it. Hey, Joe, I'm going to tell you something. I was a tough man, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I was tough, you know. Uh -huh. But I'm going to find somebody that was tougher than me, and that was Prince. Because right. I'm telling you, Prince inspired me. Because when, when I, I started out as a musician, as a drummer, mm -hmm. and when I found out I couldn't write music, you know, playing drums, I, that's when I picked up the guitar and started playing that. And then later on, started messing around with keyboards and other, you know, bass and stuff like that. But Prince is the one that inspired me for that. Because he was playing guitar, and all of a sudden I see him go and show some keyboard parts to, to Linda, and then he's showing bass parts to Andre, and I'm going like, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, and and then after continuously working with him, and then when he got signed with Warner Brothers, and you know, the, the, his whole band, the Revolution, was formed in, in our home, uh, in in uh, South Minneapolis, me, Marcy, and Chrissy's home that we had, and. Uh, um, they used to rehearse from 10 o'clock in the a.m. to 10 p.m., you know, in the night, right? And then I would drive over to Prince's house around like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and he was still rehearsing. Yeah. He was like banging know. on the drums, playing drums and stuff or like writing that. writing something. I, you know, I mean, he used to call me up 4 o'clock in the morning when he finished a tune. I mean, this is the hard. You talking about James Brown is the hardest working man in show business? Mm -hmm. Hello. We got a new leader <laughs> because, you know, and I heard Tori uh, Ruffin talking about the work ethics of Prince, you know right, what I mean, right. on, the, on the interview. And, and I tell you, you know, it, it's totally true. If you want something bad enough, Prince did not want to fail. And a lot of speeches that I've talked to, that I, I gave to him about seeing groups that had million sellers and the next day they were broke, they didn't have anything and how much support you got to have from all your people and everything like that. He did not want to fail. And this brother, I'm telling you, he I, I don't even know when he slept, you know, <laughs> because he rehearsed all the time. Mm -hmm. You do, know, do he you just wear that, uh, you out. Do you think that work ethic's still going on today? Oh, absolutely. To this day, right? Be, yeah. absolutely. Have you been able to catch some of the recent Prince tours over the years? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've seen them here at the uh, XL Center. Okay. And then I, w I was over at Paisley Park and uh, um, at his birthday uh, two years ago, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, I think it was two years yeah, ago. Yeah, and then uh, when he did that, um, uh, the listening uh, party for oh, um, right. Rainbow, Rainbow Children, Children. Yeah. yeah, I was involved in that, and I made sure I got myself filmed on that one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Silent Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Silent Bob filmed he's, him. He's so prolific. 
Oh, and absolutely. you know he's got a ton of stuff in his vault. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I predict that Prince is planning something. He's planning something really big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's been quiet for the last few months. Yeah, uh-huh. but he's planning something because he's got a storage of stuff that he's just been doing that he's just been putting in the vault. Right, you know, right. So you know he's going to do something with it real soon. You know what I mean? Uh, something's about to break out, you know. But uh, so, so do y'all get to to go out? Do you go out and check out shows in the clubs or, or the arenas there? Well, not not as no. much. Um, we kind of like we have our own studio here, right? And uh, most of the time we're working. You know, I, right, right. you know, I, I when I go back, I, I in in to the day you know, back in the day and think about you know the work ethics and stuff. It's, I still have it. I work ten, twelve hours a day myself. Mm-hmm. you know, in the studio and stuff. And uh, I tell everyone, I said, every millionaire or multi-millionaire that I know, and I know a lot of them, they work more than 10, 12 hours a day, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and they work on holidays, Saturdays, Sundays, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> the days just blend in, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that's the way it is. And so we maintain the to do the same things that we did back then with Prince today, with with the artists coming up, up and coming. Yeah. I, I got a question. I don't, I don't know if it's fair or if you want to answer this one, but you, mm-hmm. you all three can maybe contribute to this. If uh, you could name an, uh, a Minneapolis musician all star band and put one person on each instrument, um, you can you can pick a ten piece band, you know, horn section, whatever. Uh, do you have some folks in mind you'd want to put on there? Oh, oh Prince yeah. on guitar. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Definitely guitar. Prince on guitar. Prince on guitar. Prince on guitar. Okay. Definitely. Now after that. We'll get Dale Alexander from, Ma- dr- from Madhouse on drums. On drum. JP. We get Andre Simone on bass. <laughs> yep. We get Sonny Thompson playing something. You know, because <laughs> he's bad. Yeah. You know. Uh, JP on... Uh, <laughs> Jason Peterson, you know, playing saxophone. Yeah. Because he could play that, too. Who uh-huh. play keyboards? We could, uh, uh, oh, yeah, who would play keys? Who would play keyboards? Well, I don't uh, know. What about St. Paul? Or what yeah, about St. Paul. Oh, Ricky Peterson. Ricky. Ricky. There you go. There Ricky you Peterson. go. Ricky. Ricky P on the keys, baby. <laughs> you know. Uh, who else? Man? Oh, man, there's just so many tons of, of musicians and singers here. Oh, that would be the all-star band. Yeah. You hey, know. Well, who would be the lead singer? You. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we get Joe and G. You know, it's a Joe G. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, I think, you know. G. I don't know. I don't, who would we get to sing? Probably, uh, um. You know, you know who I, I, I would Javita, want. Javita, Javita Steele. Right, sing, uh, but you know who, I know she doesn't live here anymore. But she was here with Sue Ann Caldwell. Oh, oh Sue, yeah. Ann. Sue Ann. No, kid, Sue oh. Ann is the bomb. I, I always loved her voice. Oh. Always loved and her voice. And she's doing yeah. real well, too. Yeah. You know, Sue yeah. Ann's out Have you, there. You know. You've heard of Sue Ann, have oh, you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She's great. She's great. So she, she's not living in the Twin Cities anymore. No, nah, yeah. she's yeah. out there with uh, Diane Warren. <laughs> right, right. California. Right. California doing stuff with the big big people. Right. Because she sang on, um, uh, what was that big thing? Funky with... Town? No, no, yeah. No, no, that was Cynthia Johnson, right? Cynthia Johnson. Yeah. But she, she recently sang background vocals Oh, with on... the Pink and... Christina, Boulay Boucouche, Alvec Quaz. Yeah. Oh, she was on there? Yeah, she, she was did on background there. vocals on that. She ah. did all the background vocals on that. She's done stuff with George Duke and every... I mean, she's she is yeah, so she's, talented. She's it's so unbelievable. Talented. And so she, uh, Prince did a, a song on her years ago. Was uh, what was that one? Um, Kiss me quick before I lose the feeling. Was that it? Yeah. You know something like that. Yeah. You know. She also sang one of our songs. Yeah, she did. She did love and cut. But it never ago. got. It never got. To... Yeah, because, okay. you know what happened back in that day, Joe? We was in the uh, Sound Eighty Recording Studios. Uh, me, Andre, and Prince just left the studios recording "Loving Cup," uh, "Just Another Sucker," and "Dance to the Music of the World." And we leave, and then uh, Sue Ann would come in, and we didn't even know this. And they used our music for her to sing on. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we had lawyers involved there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but she did a beautiful job. But well, she did a great her. job. I mean, <laughs> you know, she's going around North Minneapolis, and somebody said, Man, I heard your stuff, Sue Ann, was singing on your stuff, man. We were like, What? I'm like, <laughs> What? I said, Man. So I went and heard it. 
And it's sending a chill up and down my back, man. Because <laughs> she killed it. It was, it was the bomb. Oh. You know? So she should definitely be able to sing with the all-star band. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Back here. Yeah. Without a doubt. So uh, if you just tuned in, uh, my special guests this afternoon have been Pepe Willie of 94 East alongside his uh, original members of 94 East and, and collaborators today, Marcy Ingvoldstad and Christy Lazenberry. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was going to say, know, what kind of names are those? <laughs> you know? That's all right. I'm just hoping I don't slip up. You, you, you're, <laughs> right. you've, you've done well. well. So right, right. Well. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to, to thank you guys. And, uh, hey, G's actually, listen, she told me uh, she's going to go one day to, to Maple Groove. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, come on over for dinner. Come, come, on, come on over and hang out with us. We right. should. Yeah, we'll cook a dinner and stuff like that. Well, you too, Joe. Come yeah, on out, come man. On, man. Hey, yeah. Joe, do you play golf? You know, I'm the only one in my family who doesn't play golf. Oh, I'm basketball man. and shooting Kevin pool. Kevin is a golfer. Uh, I got I to gotta learn how to play golf. Okay, you that's a good one. Right. Yeah. yeah. Come on up and play golf with us. Man. Oh, uh, Joe, we wanted to ask. Can you get your station in Connecticut on the regular radio? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're right here. We broadcast right. Actually, we broadcast, off, you know, from Stanford to New Haven. Okay. Right. And also, for some strange reason, we hit the signal in Long Island. Wow. So, wow. I mean, hey, we should do something where we don't know what single we want to pick for our new CD. Right. So we should, you know... Have some kind of thing where people can pick the single yeah, or something. Yeah, we, we can, uh, you know what they can do? They can go right now to the upper room with joekelly.com or they can just uh, email. Do you want to email you guys? Or? Yeah, okay. email sure. you and us. Yeah, that would be great. So you want to give your email address out? Yeah, Rio okay. Dio, baby. If you say it real fast, it's the Rio Dio. R E O D E O at AOL.com. Yeah. And, and go on to the site, listen to some clips, and, uh, you know, if yeah. you've been listening to there the show, you, you should know. Uh, oh, they, you the know, they might be better off going to cdbaby.com and listen to some of it. Yeah, that's right. You get yeah. more more of a variety. Yeah, you get there. two minutes of that. You know? Yeah. If you go to pepemusic.com, you can get onto the email from there, too, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. There's an email spot there. But yeah. one of the best things for them to do is just go get the CD <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and tell us. Tell us which one yeah. you like the best, and we'll pick the single out yeah. for our national release. And yeah. we're going to have a national release real soon coming yeah, up. Yeah, and you know, you know, you got to come down. I mean, Pepe's from, from Brooklyn. That's right. And, I know. Uh, you know, we have performances all the time right here in the studio. You can just come by and kick it in yeah. the spring or summer. Taja Seville came by last summer. Oh, so that, no that was cool. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. So, you know, come down, just hang out. Oh, I would love to. I would love to. Would do it. You know, you tell G to get that English straight. <laughs> <laughs> you tell her. <laughs> oh, you tell her we love. Tell her we love her though. Love love her. She she can teach us a few things in French. Yeah, yeah that's so. true. Tell her nous c'est tant c'est soit joli. Uh oh. Let her tell you Uh-oh. what that means. So. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh oh. She she might be firing back something. something <laughs> you might have started something. Oh, she said ha ha ha. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh we, we love the joke, so no problems with it. Uh, <laughs> believe me. Well, we yeah. love your show, man. Oh, man. You guys we love great. your show. Yeah, and love you, your support. And Joe, you've been doing this for a long time. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're it keeping up your health, man. <laughs> yeah. Keep up your health. You don't smoke cigarettes, do you? No, no, not at all. All right. Yeah. But good, Joe, good. Joe, yeah. Joe around. is that picture of you recent? I don't know which one. You know, you, you can call up a picture on um, 365.com. I think that was a couple years ago, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. It still looks like you're 19. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> I, I, actually, if, if, you go, if you go to the upper room with JoeKelly.com, we're adding pictures up there. We just opened up the website. Oh. So there's like a recent one and, you know. All right, beautiful. Hopefully I'm still looking young, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the music keeping us healthy. So. Absolutely. Yeah. The music is running through yeah. our veins. And i got to buy some <laughs> golf clubs and, and tee yeah, up, go, tea man, up there you with you all out there. <laughs> yeah. So, so listen, I want to thank uh, my special guest from 94 East out of Maple Grove, Minnesota. Yeah. How, how far are you from the Twin Cities? Uh, 20 oh, minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. 
So, uh, Christy Lazenberry? 15 minutes if I drive. Oh. <laughs> Especially when you're bumping your own music. Right? There you go, baby. <laughs> right. Yeah, these are really good Rolling drive. Rolling in my chariot. They're, they're awesome. really good driving tunes. Right, yeah. right. So, uh, Christy Lazenberry, Marcy mm-hmm. Ingvolstad, and Pepe Willie, thanks so much for you're coming welcome. on the show. And, and Thank you know, you the definitely. Minneapolis music special wouldn't be complete without having That's they all right. stop by. Play 1015, man. <laughs> Yeah. Gotta so, pick that 1015. So I think what we're going to do, we'll go uh, with one of